On a dark, chilling night in March 2017, precisely at 9.07 p.m., a young man dressed in black walked into the Thessaloniki Grill in Hearn, Germany. He approached the counter and with an almost inaudible whisper uttered, I am Marcel. The perplexed employee questioned, which Marcel is this then? Look at your tablet, the young man commanded, his voice barely a murmur. You will see a picture of me there. As the employee's eyes darted to the screen, the horrifying truth revealed itself. Marcel was the notorious headline of Germany, a merciless killer, on the run for four harrowing days. With an eerie calmness, the young man spoke. Call the police. I'm wanted. Before we start, if you find this video fascinating, then at the end, please drop it a like and let me know what you thought about the case. It helps the channel. Also, don't forget to hit subscribe for more. Thank you. In the north of Germany, a sinister teenager committed a brutal pair of murders. He posted chilling images and videos of the crimes to social media and the dark web. Marcel Hess, a 19-year-old devoid of warmth and remorse, has been branded the WhatsApp killer by authorities. Hess, a martial arts enthusiast residing with his parents, was unemployed and socially reclusive. After being deemed unstable and rejected by the German army, his descent into darkness accelerated. His sister recounted their once normal relationship until primary school, when he, quote, became strange and sought refuge in the digital world due to his lack of friends. She revealed his violent tendencies emerged early on, recalling how he attacked a teacher with a pair of scissors and chased his brother through their home with a knife. The heinous acts started when he was chatting to a friend online. He was talking about causing damage to himself. The chat says, soon all preparations are done, can barely walk straight after all the red wine. If I can't pull it off today, I'll do something jail worthy. He then said, want 4chan worthy pictures later? To which his friend replied, of course. His friend then asks him, why are you doing this? He replied with this. Kein Bock mehr, ich will nicht arbeiten, deswegen ist natürlich der einzige Grund. Ich müsste bald Bewerbung schreiben, aber na. This roughly translates to, I don't want to work anymore. I don't want to work. That's the only reason. I should write more applications, but meh. The conversation came to an abrupt halt and fate took a grim turn as Hess made the fateful decision to commit a heinous act worthy of imprisonment. For years, Hess had resided with his parents, but since the beginning of that year, he had been living alone with his sister, Sandra, after their parents had moved out. On that fateful Monday evening at 6 p.m., he ventured to his neighbor's house. The family, comprised of mother Janet F, stepfather Pascal R, and three brothers, Maurice, Stephen, and the youngest, Jaden. The parents were out shopping, leaving the three siblings at home. Hess rang the doorbell and asked Jaden if he could assist him in setting up a pair of ladders. The unsuspecting nine-year-old agreed. As his brothers watched him leave, Jaden accompanied Hess to his house. Once there, Hess deviously lured the innocent boy into the darkness of his basement, where he stabbed Jaden 58 times, and allegedly he filmed it and uploaded it onto the dark web on a site called Deeper Cuts. Within hours of committing the heinous act, 
Hess coldly resumed his conversation with his friend, sending a series of gruesome photos of the victim's lifeless body and the crime scene, including one where he had just cleansed the murder weapon. His chilling voice messages continued. They said, I can't seem to get the rope to work, but I just killed the neighbor, so it doesn't feel special now. My hand is bleeding, and that's the only thing that's bothering me. Just cleaned up the blood. One of my shoes is stained, but it's fine. I think I'll turn myself in after a few days and enjoy the jail life. Maybe I'll invite another neighbor over and do the same thing. I'd have two murders to my name then. I'd like to get a girl over so I can force myself on her. By the way, Jaden's insides feel really weird. I can pull them out of him. Ugh. God. He concluded the chilling exchanged with a text message. It read, It was really easy. I could turn one murder into two. His final words were, Read the news tomorrow. Once you get past the mental barrier, it's really easy. Two hours later, Jaden's unsuspecting parents returned home and their worst nightmare began when they realized that their young son had not come back. I went over and banged and yelled, but no one answered, the distraught stepfather Pascal recalled. Something bad has happened, the mother Janet remembered, telling her husband at that dreadful moment. In desperation, Pascal and his stepsons clambered over a balcony wall to enter the basement of the house where they discovered Jaden's lifeless body. I wanted to give him a heart massage, but the blood was streaming from his wounds. The image of my stepson lying there, dead. I will never forget this, said the heartbroken Pascal, as he recounted the horrifying scene from that fateful Monday evening. I found him lying in a giant lake of his own blood, riddled with countless stab wounds, he said. In a state of shock and despair, Pascal and Janet promptly alerted the police, who arrived at the gruesome crime scene. Simultaneously, a disturbed Darknet user, claiming to be acquainted with the killer, after witnessing the horrifying images of the young boy on their chat, they told the police, I have just seen a boy murdered on the internet. Thus began an all-out manhunt for Hess. The authorities pulled out all the stops, deploying helicopters, canine units, and numerous officers in an unprecedented move that defied Germany's strict privacy laws. They even publicized Hess's full name and image in the media. Typically, only the first name and the initial of the second name are disclosed, but the urgency to apprehend Hess overrode these conventions. They were determined to bring him into custody immediately. On the very day that the manhunt commenced, Hess paid a visit to his friend, Christopher W., who resided in the same town. They spent their time playing computer games, eating pizza, and eventually falling asleep. The following day, Hess took to 4chan, posting a photo of a bloodied boot on a bloodstained floor beside a blade. The caption read, I skip state, killed an adult woman, really hard to use XP. Her daughter will come home soon, might actually make a vid soon. He continued, I cut my hand fighting a 120 kilogram beast, had more vigor than the kid, cold, died at 8 a.m., did pick at 1 p.m., finally set up her crappy PC good enough to run. I tortured the credentials out of her, have access to bank, PC and phone, so cannot drop the name yet. One skeptical user challenged him, demanding, timestamp with corpse or BS. Hess responded by posting a photo of the lifeless body accompanied by a timestamp. However, it was later revealed that the victim was not a woman, but Christopher W whom Hess had slain after his friend recognized him on TV as the suspect in the boy's murder. 
Hess feared that Christopher might alert the authorities and expose his whereabouts. Hess stabbed him 68 times and is said to have rammed the pen into the back of his neck. For two days, Hess remained in the flat alone with Christopher's lifeless body. During this time, he made a final post on 4chan, ominously stating, may get caught soon. He also shared a link to a manifesto. This is segments from the manifesto. To kill someone is just a series of movements. To produce the wound, to keep the victim from defending, to give the mortal blow and wait for the victim to be dazed. Hess also provided a motive for his heinous actions, stating, There is a motive, which I've stated, but neither will you press release it, nor probably accept it, since such a meek cause doesn't warrant my actions. Well, it was effective. I got what I wanted. I will not need to contribute to society via becoming an upstanding citizen. Economies work mostly by forced altruism, and I have zero interest in taking part in sustaining something so useless. The following day, Hess decided to turn himself in. It was then that he walked into the Thessaloniki grill and instructed the staff to call the police. A mere 150 meters away, a flat was engulfed in flames, and within it, another body was discovered. Once in custody, Hess confessed to setting the fire in the flat. It was Christopher W's. In the western Germany city of Bochum, the court found 20-year-old Marcel Hess guilty of the murders of his neighbor Jaden and that of Christopher W in the town of Hearn. Hess was sentenced by the court to life in prison with a conditional preventive detention. In Germany, a sentence without such a preventive detention typically results in automatic release after serving 15 years. The court's ruling aligned with the demands of the public prosecutor's office, citing the extreme brutality of the murders as justification for the severe punishment. Hess entered the courtroom dressed entirely in black and wearing handcuffs which were later removed by an officer. The court deliberated whether Hess should be tried as an adult or under juvenile criminal law, which is common in Germany for those under 21. After hearing the testimony of forensic psychologist, Dr. Sabine Nawara, the court decided to sentence Hess according to adult law. Nawara argued that Hess, at the time of the crime, was not the same as a teenager. Despite his youthful appearance, she said his personality was well developed, and she noted the psychopathic, narcissistic, and sadistic elements in his behavior, which made the trial under juvenile law inappropriate. A prison doctor who examined Hess shortly after his detainment described him as a monster and even likened him to Hannibal Lecter. They detailed Hess's peculiar habits in prison. They said, Hess is almost exclusively found standing next to the fence with his eyes closed, when prisoners are allowed out of their cells for a short break. The doctor continued, he is very meticulous, which shows itself during meal time. He puts butter on six pieces of bread, cuts off the bread crust and places it accurately on the edge of the plate. Hess's sister, Sandy, testified that her brother was proud of his actions. And when she asked him during a jail visit if he regretted his crimes, he coldly responded, no. As the courtroom doors closed, the haunting echo of Marcel Hesse's cold, unrepentant response reverberated through the minds of those who bore to witness the chilling trial. The dark shadow of his heinous crimes would linger over the town of Hearn, where innocence was shattered and lives were forever changed. The cold-hearted killer, now confined to the sterile walls of his cell, seemed indifferent to the devastation he had caused. 
that's the end of this episode. Until next time, stay sane.